Hi, this is Lil Dwarf playing games while rambling incoherently into a microphone. Why? Well, just because I can, and I continue with the sinking city blind. I'm going to go and report to uh, Throgmorton. into your delicate matter. Excellent. Don't spare me any details. Glover's dead. He was killed by a man named Sidney Stokes who happened to be robbing his place. He wasn't working alone. He had a partner, Phil O'Connell. Didn't end up much better. All over uh, some kind of mirror, apparently. Truck. Where is a mirror now? Their employer has it. Uh, some mystery woman. I didn't get her name, but she obviously wasn't fooling around. I see. So, my enigmatic competitor has finally shown her hand. And the thieves are both dead, you say? Uh, I don't feel any particular need or, like, I don't particularly want even to cover for uh, what's his name? Like, he's kind of scum, like, the game hasn't prov provided me with any justification of why I should even be lenient towards him, so you can have him. Sidney Stokes managed to make it out in one piece. Now, if I had to guess, he's probably holed up at his home. Want the address? I would welcome it. I'll take pleasure in, uh, educating him on some, uh, shall we say, essential truths. It wouldn't have killed you to let me know you were going after the mirror from the start. As I said, this is a very delicate matter. I wasn't confident I could trust you with such sensitive information until now. All right, I've held up my end of the bargain. Now, it's your turn. Of course, Mr. Reed. Here's your payment. Now that you know everything, would you accept the second part of the job? Let me guess. You want me to track down the mirror? Yes. And the one who so rudely snatched it from my grasp. Sure. I'm on it. Only got one lead, though. Our culprit had a bone to pick with someone named Francis. Mean anything to you? Ah, yes. That is without doubt my father, Francis Throgmorton. K. Rest his soul. What's he got to do with this? I found mention of the mirror in his records. That's what led me to take interest. Your father was a prominent man. I'm sure he had enemies. Anyone come to mind? None would outlive him. You mentioned your father left records. Mind if I take a gander at them? The prospect of you rifling through my father's possessions does not fill me with joy, Mr. Reed. Well, if that's what you need, so be it. Take this key. Hmm. Okay. Francis Trogmorton discovers the unknown Africa, 1891. Seems an ambitious expedition. Uh, like father, like son. Uh, curious craftsmanship. These must be worth a fortune. I'm looking sharp, but I guess that's the point. Exclusive interview. Francis Trogmorton's expedition to Africa has proven to be one of the most ambitious, if sadly un underappreciated, undertakings of 1891. He has returned with numerous histo historical artifacts, invaluable anthropological research, 
a newborn sa son christened Robert, and a plethora of fascinating cultural insights, today, in an exclusive interview with the Oakmont Chronicle, he has agreed to share some of those insights with us. Eighteen ninety one must have been a busy year for Francis. <laughs> yes, so so I imagine this is actually like his wife. Uh <laughs> private correspondence, uh, eighteen ninety four, Francis. Divorce is no simple matter these days. It has never been in my legal practice. You must define the fault you shall present to the court, the most common op options being cruelty, ad uh, adultery, or incurable mental illness. It is my impression that your firstborn's death at the tender age of seven dealt a blow to Bethany's health. I do sincerely hope she recovers, but the court won't share my concerns. Besides, Oakmont Asylum seems to be a very well-run place. Okay, so he... He had a... Wife... Uh, he had a human wife? And then, like, committed her to an insane asylum to bang an ape? Which... What? It's pretty crazy, my dude. some questions about Bethany. I beg your pardon? I don't believe I know anyone of that name. Well, it came up during the investigation. See, your father divorced, and his ex-wife's name was Bethany. Say no more. It is beyond my earliest memories. But, even if it weren't, my father's business is his own. I shall not engage in gossip. Your father led an expedition back in 1891. Do you know anything about it? I'm not the best person to ask, I'm afraid. I was a babe in arms back then, and my father never made his findings public. It is a great shame, of course. His work would have turned the science of evolution on its head. Yeah, I can see that. Have a good day. Mm, okay. I leveled up, I guess. Mm. Yeah, I should check asylum records for that Bethany. Uh, you know, might be helpful in my investigation. Uh, what do I want to do with my point? Uh, okay, this requires this. 15% chance to save materials when crafting first aid kits and traps. Okay, why not? Why not? I'm not in the mood for chit-chat, Mr. Reed. So what, what can I do to clear the quest log a little bit? Like, I guess I could do... I could do... Uh, this mm. Whisper Street between Central Street and Deepshore Road. Whisper Street. Okay, so somewhere in this stretch then.
instructions for the needy. If you feel you can't stand the hunger, pain, diseases of this world, accept my gift. The blue pill you've got in your hand is the answer to your prayers. Take it and you'll be fed. Take it and the pain will go away. The next hour of your life will be blessed. One pill and you'll be happy till the end of your life. I promise. Well, is that poison? Because if it is, then... Like, you could very well be happy until the end of your life. Once you take it. It's just not going to be very long. Traveler S. Marge, status couldn't bear the stress, returned to Earth. Next address, Kingsport Street, Eastern Coverside. Do we really need to send back the travelers like this? It's a waste of time, if you ask me. Hmm. Apparently that's the end of it. Non-functioning, the brain seems to be too big for its cylinder. Mm, master survivalist, another 10% chance to save materials when crafting. So what else I can do? Mm. Uh, Oakland Asylum. Yeah, I guess I'll start with that. Although... Uh, read the heights. Uh, read the heights.
looking for Bethany Throgmorton. You got any patients by that name? We'd know if we had a Throgmorton. Although, we do have a Bethany. Or rather, we did. Sh she's missing. And not on one of her usual walks. Her usual walks? You let patients leave the building? Oh, Bethany was harmless. And she always came back. This time, well, I've never known her to be like that. You mean she broke out? Yes, knocked an orderly out cold. She was out the door in a moment. It took us all by surprise. She's usually harmless. Any idea where she went? No. She had been odd recently, though. Uh, muttering to herself and... She drew this strange picture on her bedroom wall. That's interesting. Can I take a look at her room? I suppose it couldn't hurt. She had a separate room downstairs. Here's the key, but do watch out for broken glass. Bye. Downstairs, you say. At seven years each, that's a lot of bad luck. I'm glad it's not mine. Throgmorton's in mourning. Young Hammon Throgmorton, Fra Francis Throgmorton's, Throgmorton's firstborn, has been pronounced dead. Mortally injured in a mysterious accident during a family holiday, little Hammond could not be revived, despite his doctor's best efforts. The funeral will be held later this week, with only family and close friends attending. In this dark and tragic hour, we are trying to remain grateful for all, all we have, including baby Robert shared Francis Throgmorton. As my sole rema remaining heir, I will do all, all that I can to protect him. Someone had a field day to facing these. And all I do, I do for my dear Hammond. I cannot forget that. Shame on me for thinking that reprobate Squint had more common sense than greed in him. He got the mirror, and I do not care how he did it. But when the time came for the exchange, he wanted more, so much more that he had the goal to threaten me, uh, said he would find a new buyer. What's done is done. No one has the right to come between a mother and her child. But wait, but, but her, her child is dead. Are she like, is she like trying to, I don't know, contact him or like revive him from beyond the grave? Because that is technically possible. Uh, within the scope of this universe, but the, the problem is uh, in Lovecraft stories uh, Whenever people were trying to reanimate the dead uh, It always ended up wrong I will find it baby boy. I promise Just tell me more Hmm a picture of a house but mm. but it seems rather nondescript like I'm not entirely sure what am I supposed to draw from there this taken at gunpoint? That's the other side of the photo, though. Mm. That's her with... Like, my... 
the understanding is like that most likely it was Francis Throckmorton himself that killed his own firstborn son because he wanted to establish this like ape dynasty uh, and he wanted uh, Robert to be his heir, right? But Robert was younger than Hammond, his firstborn human son. Uh... I will find it, baby boy. I promise. Just tell me more. Mm. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure what should I do with this. Like, this is a relatively nondescript house, and I'm not sure how that. Someone had a field day defacing these. How that helps me in knowing where to go. sure uh, what this is supposed to represent I don't remember off the top of my head any house that looks like this and hmm. and it, it's not like it's super distinct or anything to do with that. I'll give it a bit of a pause. Maybe I'll come across some realization. Uh, what else can I do? I guess I can do this. Uh, Ward Street between Bourbon Road and Sam Reed uh, in Reed Heights. Ward Street. Uh, okay, so right here. So this is very easy to find. I'll go there and do that. Neophyte, the fecund mother blesses you. Your servitude has been noticed. You will have a chance to join the inner circle and see our, our mother with thine own eyes. Our brothers carry the bodies of her abandoned children. To prove yourself well worthy, prepare a place where they can be hidden and forgotten forever. In return, the fecund mother will embrace you and grant you her generous gifts.
The fecund mother devours the weak flesh. The fecund mother gives life to those consumed, a new birth in many forms. The fecund mother has many children, and her family grows. The fecund mother is kind, for anyone might, might be her child. But bad, bad the children are purged, and left outside in cold light. Keep the secrets of our mother, of your mother, and she will grant you eternity. Take a sample for Dr. Grant to examine. Hmm. Okay, but the icon has not disappeared, from which I take it I have not sort of solved this location. Hmm. Dunwich pear. Dunwich pear. The oily taste that truly satisfies. Those bags stink worse than a barrel of rotten fish, or fisk, whatever. Quick, bring them in before the neighbors see us. Are those the last ones? did everything you asked, yeah? So when will my initiation begin? Okay, let's see what we have here. Mm. So they were like amalgamated. Quick, bring them in before the neighbors see us. Are those the last one? I did everything you asked, yeah? So when will my initiation begin? <laughs> Members of a cult were disposing of bodies in the basement of the shop. The corpses merged together to form a huge monstrosity. The shop owner became part of a cult worshipping a de deity they called the Fecund Mother. Hoping to be, be initiated faster, he allowed the cult member to store, store bodies in his basement. For some reason, they were all covered in putrid slime. After the bodies were thrown to the basement, some of them merged together, uh, reviving in the form of a huge monstrosity. Um, and this is on... Willow Lane between Herald Street and Bullock. On Herald Lane.
Oh, Willow Lane between Herald Street and Bullock Street. Willow Lane. here. This is not great. almost as if that place is sort of blocked for the time being. Like, there seem to be barricades and the like in the way. Hmm. It, it very much feels blocked. Like it, it's also like shady and not entirely clear. for later then. Mm, Vinland Avenue, south of University. Mm, Seven Oaks Street. Whatever exactly I choose to do with my side quests, I'm going to do it next time because this episode has been long enough. So that's all for this one and I will see you in the next one. Bye.